What's up, y'all? It's TBE TBE. Uh, it's part one of my uh, Martin review, Martin Transport review. Um, I think in my part four video of my Stevenson, I talked about how when I got back to the yard, that um, I got back to the yard, gave him the truck back, let him keep whatever was in it, refrigerator, the TV might have been damn right, but I'm not sure about that, kept my microwave. Um, load up the car, we left. I walked right, I drove back to the yard, parked, parked the truck in the uh, inspection. And she was like, TV, take it through inspection. I was like, please. I drove in just enough to get past the gate, got out, grabbed my bags, and left. I took most of the stuff out. The truck stopped before that. You know, there's a truck stop up the street from uh, Stevenson. If you've been to Stevenson, you know what I'm talking about. Just a regular truck stop. They got uh, Mexican food and stuff in there. So she met me there in the yard, dropped the truck. So um, I had already talked to the woman from Martin the day before because I couldn't get in KLM because they were scared. Uh, they scared of Stevenson. They still owe money. Excuse me. They don't want nothing to do with you. So um, she comes to get me. We stayed at a hotel. Her, my son, my oldest, my oldest son. And my youngest son came, and uh, they were, uh, I guess they were out shopping or whatever, the night before, he bought some shoes, he bought some bread, they found a nice mall. There's a lot of nice malls, nice shopping down there in Texas. So, I left, went home, or, I think this was on like a Friday, orientation didn't start till like a Wednesday, you know, a Monday, orientation didn't start till like a Monday. Um, her and my youngest son King, we went to the hotel in Atlanta, it was a nice hotel Martin did pay for a nice hotel they paid they paid for a pretty nice hotel, it was like a split room where you got your your bed and a, a bed on one side with a TV and then there's like a living room another side with a TV and there also, so he was able to look at, the youngest son was able to look at his own TV because he, he just takes over the TV He's not trying to hear nothing I'm talking about. So, um, first day of orientation, it was all right. He was mostly just filling out paperwork like any other orientation was. Um, now, remember that I had, my physical was about to run out. So, I did need to get another physical. Some guys already had their physicals. So, then the uh, second day rolls around. Well, they buy you lunch and everything while you're there. Where I went back to the hotel. See, I was worried because they didn't know I had my son and my wife with me. Where you had to literally check in every day. Like, literally check out, check back in every day. So she had to find something to do during the day while I was at my orientation. But her aunt lives there in Atlanta. So she was able to go over her aunt sometimes or whatever. Or just stay out doing whatever. So... Then came the day for the, uh, we did the driver's test, all that crap, man. It was automatic, freight liner. Um, but then the day came for the physical. So we went, we got our physicals. Everybody went and did their physical. Then uh, after we did our physical, the guy measured my neck. He said my neck was just fine. It was under 17 inches. I think 17 inches is like, if it's over 17 inches, you've got to have a sleep apnea machine and uh, mine was under that like 16 16 and a quarter something like that so I was worried about the physical I passed the physical with no problem because I do have high blood pressure it goes up and down at times and I told you I also developed uh, diabetes while I was while I was driving so I was worried about my glucose level also showing up but they only do the test strips with the strips so I knew it was, I was taking medication for it. So I knew it was down, I tested it. I had a test kit, tested it myself before I even, and I also monitored my own blood pressure. I have an automatic blood pressure cuff that I keep with me at all times. When I'm feeling bad, I need to know why I'm feeling bad. So it could be blood pressure, it could be anything, but I need to know that it's not my blood pressure. If it's my blood pressure, then I got other problems. So, past physical, we get back there, and then she's like, um, 
you all had to take a sleep test. I was like, a sleep test? I said, I passed my physical. What did I take a sleep test for? She said, oh, everybody has to take a sleep test. Oh, everybody got to take a sleep test. So it was me, a older female, and two other males in the class. And believe it or not, I took the test. All of us failed the sleep test besides the biggest dude that was in the class. Yeah. The big fat dude didn't have sleep at But we had it. So I was just like, my wife said she watched me sleep, whatever. She don't remember me stop breathing. It said I stopped breathing almost a minute before I started breathing again. So I was like, I've never had a problem sleeping or being tired in the middle of the day. So I don't know where that's coming from. But I need the job. They talk about guaranteed no less than $1,000 a week and all this other crap. So I needed the job. You know, $1,000, that was with being on the Alliance program and having free fuel and all of that before I even made $1,000 on that. So just riding around regional and being able to be home almost every week, you know what I mean? I thought that was a good damn deal. That was a good deal. So I didn't like it, but uh, I went on that I really have a choice. I said, all right, man. But that's one thing that nobody tells you when you come to these uh, trucking, these orientations. They are not 100% truthful about all the tests, and all the things that they do to um, to you when you get there. Like it's all orientations are different, and they always that part of the orientation, the sleep apnea machine. They know that would drive people away. They know people won't come there if they know they have to get on one of these machines. Because the machine has changed the way I breathe now. And now it's gotten to a point where I can't sleep without the machine. Well, I don't feel comfortable sleeping without the machine because it regulates my breathing overnight. So it's a lot of stuff to it. And it's not just about whether or not you got to sleep acting. But um, they said, uh, they said, yeah, uh, you failed the test. You got to have a sleep in the machine. I was like, all right, you got to have a sleep apnea machine, whatever. So, um, so, they assigned me a truck that day. Um, I don't know why I was so stressed. I was stressed out for some reason, man. I just kept fussing at my wife over dumb stuff that whole day. I remember she was trying to help me take stuff out the car. I was like, never mind, I got it. Like, I don't know what I was stressed about, but I guess it was the whole thing that had to do with a sleep acting machine. And, you know what I mean? You just feel like you're not in control that these companies try their best to wrap their arms around you and control everything that you're doing. And I don't, I don't like that. Man. I don't like that. And to me, trucking more about freedom than it was about somebody trying to control me. So I um, played ball, man. They gave me this this damn freight liner. I hate this truck, but uh, they gave me this freight liner. I could have got out of the freight liner, but I would have to go back to stick. And at that point. I had already been driven an automatic at uh, Stevenson. I had been driven, and I was just too lazy. I was too lazy. I ain't even going to lie to you. I was too lazy to go back shifting gears. Like, I just didn't feel like it. I didn't feel like going back shifting gears no more. I don't care what it make you feel like a truck driver, whatever. I don't give a damn about all that. I was feeling like a truck driver shifting gears. So, um, I got the freight liner, man. Got my first load. My first load, I don't even remember what the hell my first load was because all they ever did was run me back and forth up to 75. It was like Atlanta, Florida, Florida, Atlanta, Atlanta, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, back to Atlanta, back down. It was back and forth, back. Sometimes I was even able to stop by the house because we lived right off of 75. Like we lived right off of 75. Exit, uh, I think it was 22 in Bell Austin. So when I would come through, you know what I mean, I would stop, take a break there, eat lunch at the house or whatever, take a shower, or sometime I'll be able, at the end of my night, push it, push my hours so I could just spend the night at home. That was the best thing about living there, man. But, racist ass Valdosta, my wife couldn't get a damn job doing what she was doing because she transferred, but she transferred from the Northeast where the pay is a whole lot better. So they transferred her pay down to Valdosta 
So the girls down there had this attitude with her, and it was the black girls too. It wasn't just about race. I think it had more to do with how much she was making. And she was making more than the people who were over top of her. You know what I mean? They didn't like that. Well, that's, that's the base pay up there. So they found a way to get her out of there, and they didn't fire her. They laid her off for pay and all this mess, man. It, it, was, it was terrible. But um, that's how she was able to come on the road with me for about a month. So she's still receiving unemployment at the time. I'm, uh, I'm switching over, and I'm going to Martin. So that's why she's home all the time. But uh, her pay actually didn't run out until we moved back to Delaware. We moved back up north to Maryland, Delaware, and then uh, her unemployment finally ran out. But she found another job in no time because it's the Northeast. You know what I mean? So it don't matter. Color don't matter. It's the only thing that matters up there is skin. Unlike down, unlike down south, man. Just return. But, um, so yeah, so I'm driving, driving, going home. So the trick to it was you can go home every week, but it can only be for 34 hours. Whenever your 34 hours is up, you got to be back in that truck. So, I said, but Shane, he was he was kind of letting me get away. With like, I would go home on a Friday, come back out Sunday night or Monday morning. You know what I mean? He was like, you pick either come back out Sunday night or Monday morning, or if I don't send you home until Saturday, then you can come back out Monday. So it worked out for me. I parked my truck right in my driveway, right at the house. I was good. Kids were good. Um, so then they, they would fuss at me every once in a while and need me to stay out a little longer. Uh, then I noticed they were jacking me on my automatic, on my auto, uh, my thousand dollar week pay. So I was like, "What? Uh, what did I do wrong not to get my thousand dollars a week?" And he was like, uh, "I don't know. Uh, it ain't got nothing to do with me." So John Manager about, "Well, it ain't got nothing to do with me." So then you got to go talk to them bitches and find them. The bitches and uh, goddamn, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's finance uh, or payroll, payroll. So you call them. And it'll be like, whatever well, 10 pages to your bills, you only sent the nine. Uh, so did y'all not get paid or something? Like, yeah, well, yeah, we got paid for the load, but you just need to send in all your paper. I was, I was like, all right, you got me on that. So then the next time they turned me down for the thousand dollars was, um, what was that for us? A scale ticket. PO, I didn't send in. Like you got to send in your POs when they send you a PO or scale or something like that. You got to send that back in. Well, that that money came out of my pocket. It didn't come out of their pocket. So I didn't do things in order. So you turned down my pay again for thousand dollars. So I'm like, man. So then the third time it got turned down. The um. Now you got to remember when my. When it was getting turned down, I was still getting like 500 and something, almost $600, you know, just off the miles itself. Because at this point, I'm making 50, 50 cent a mile. So premium pay was like 55 cent a mile for premium pay. So, um, so yeah, but I wanted that grand. So I just told, I start, I had, I just started telling Shane, like, look, man, I don't know what's going on with this, this our guaranteed thousand dollar thing. So he already knew it because he'd been getting phone calls all, all week about it from other drivers. So he said, um, well, I'm just going to make sure you get the miles and you don't have to worry about it. So he stopped running me back and forth, Florida, Florida, Georgia, Florida, Georgia. Because sometimes those 500, those, that 500 mile load would take me, they wanted two days, almost sometimes three days on that load. Like it, it was ridiculous. It's like you don't need three days to do a 500 mile load. So he started sending me from either Atlanta to Chicago rail yard or down Florida to Chicago rail yard, making sure that it was over a grand going up because it would be a grand for me coming back, a thousand miles for me coming back. My 2,000 miles, 50 cent a mile, that'd be my thousand dollars. I wouldn't have to worry about it. And I could do it within a week and go home. So yeah, it takes about two and a half days. I get up, it's due as soon as you get there get right up to the rail yard it takes me no more than from Atlanta Chicago two whole days of driving if 
I, if it's a drop and hold. Now, if it's a spot load already ready, loaded, ready for me to go, I can get it in two days. I'm there. I'm there that night. The second night, I'm there that night. So, um, just like tonight, I ended up in uh, Kentucky from Atlanta. So, that's always where I'm going to end up being. I'm going to end up being somewhere in the, in the Kentucky bottom of Indiana area. And then I'll go ahead and take it the rest of the way the next day. Like I, I'll be getting it out here. I don't play around. So, um... So he started running me like that. Then I got this new guy named Pat. Thought we were cool because we had the last, we had the same last name. Oh, my name is Burroughs too. I don't, I don't care if your last name is Burroughs. What's wrong with you? Like, how are you gonna run me, man? So he started wanting me to do all these favors. Uh, can you, I need you to do Walmart. I need you to do. I I get hard to do Walmart. Shane never asked me to do Walmart. So I was like, just run me, man. Just, just, oh, I got to give you what we got. You know, then that mess started. I got to give you what we got mess started. So I was like, all right, dude, you give me whatever you want. I'm going home every week. Like, I'm not going to stay out here for two weeks running around in circles for uh, Walmart. And, uh, yeah, that Walmart, the Walmart, the one they got, the one in Tennessee, terrible. Them rednecks up there, man, they're, they're terrible. They're terrible and they're lazy as I don't know what. Where they get all called black people lazy? Boy, they are some lazy, lazy dudes. Up there. They're just lazy, man. They're lazy. I ain't never seen nothing like it. So, told Pat I wasn't doing that. In the middle of my runs, I was like, I would have these good runs, like 900 mile loads. He would take me off in the middle of the load. Oh, I need you to uh, repower this person. But I'm not sure you're going to be able to, to make. He was just messing with me constantly, messing with my money, man. I didn't like that. So I, every once in a while, I had to cuss his ass. I would cuss him out. I literally cuss him out. Sometimes I apologize for cussing him out. Sometimes I had to cuss him out, bro. Like, you messing with my money. I understand you got a quota. You're trying to get all these deliveries done and not worried about the fact that I live off of miles. I don't live off a of quota like you do. I live off the miles that I make. So, um, so at this time, I'm stressing with him so much that I'm forgetting about getting on my machine. This is my machine. I, I wasn't getting on my machine the way I was supposed to be getting on my machine. So, um, I got a warning about that. So, next thing, I, I'm, we moved back to Delaware. I, I've been driving for them almost a year. The whole summer went pretty good. Pretty good. Pat was alright. He got me to, um, got me to Chicago to my son's graduation, naval uh, graduation. I don't know if I, I didn't really shoot a video of that. I should have shot like a video of that and posted, but I didn't. But he, he uh, graduated from the Naval Academy up in Chicago. He's in Virginia now. So he got me up there. He did get me up there. So, um, but as far as this Freightliner, I haven't really had any problems with the Freightliner besides the air. And it's just the air to the system and these things is. I don't know what it was. I had air in my dash one time when I was in uh, Memphis, and I had to go back to the Memphis yard because it was literally coming through the damn dash. The whole bag on truck was smoked up. So something with the air. But other than that, mechanically, I haven't had a problem with the truck and the starter. The starter. The starter went up on me when we went to Chicago to go to my son's graduation for Naval Academy. So it was a starter and the air. It's the only two mechanical things that happened to this truck. So I complain about the truck. I don't like the truck, but mechanically, it has held up pretty good. You know what I mean? It, the truck has over 400,000 miles on it, so of course the starter would go up on it about that time, especially the way I started, because I don't always wait for it to, um, for it to which car. I don't always do that. A lot of people don't do it too, so I don't get on my back about it, but I don't always do that. And sometimes I make a mistake and started too early and I guess they said it's hard on the starter you need to let it calibrate before you start it so yeah but uh that's part one of my Martin review got a couple other parts of stuff I need to talk about with Martin and uh this is just part one part two I'll get more in depth about this machine that I'm on how I clean it how I use it when I use it if I forget to use it how I use it 
That's it for now. TVE, I'm out.